Hey, and welcome back. So, uh, let's start by doing a repetition from last time. So last time we talked about uh, the character set, char set. Um, and we talked about how we could make our own character set. Well, I made my own here, and I did it the hard way. So what do I mean by the hard way? Well, I um, plotted in ones and zeros like this. So here I have the character, uh, the, the at symbol, and here I have my A and my B, C, and so on. So I basically made a character set um, with ones and zeros like this. Now, obviously, this is crazy. I don't expect you to, to do it this way. So, um, anyway, this is just an example so that you can see, give, it a, give you a more visual way of seeing how this works. So, you can see for every character, <clears throat> like we talked about last time, we have 8 bytes. So every character has 8 bytes. <clears throat> now, we're talking about um, the character graphics. <clears throat> so, what I was trying to say last time is that we, um, we, we can't get confused now with the character graphics, which is 8 bytes per character. And just um, storing a character into the uh, screen RAM, you know, using the screen codes, because in that sense, the character is just one byte, because it's just a screen code. So for example, screen code one, that's an A. So in that sense, using the screen codes, uh, a character is just a byte. But again, that's screen codes. Now we're talking about the graphics of every character. So we have to have uh, two thoughts in our head at the same time. So we have screen codes, which is just a byte. Then we have the actual graphics for every character, and that's eight bytes per character. Hopefully that makes sense. It's important to make that distinction. So that's of course why uh, a full character set takes up two kilobytes, because we have 255 characters, every character takes up eight bytes. As I said, hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, now I have my character set here that, <coughs> that I made um, the really hard way. <coughs> Excuse me. I made it the really hard way. So I saved that in a file. <coughs> I haven't got any basic upstart or anything like that. I just plotted in this in this file. And I saved it in a file called charset high res dot asm now i made another file over here and i said down here let's look at this first <clears throat> so we have looked at this before and we are going to look at more <clears throat> i'm sorry we are going to look more uh, um, at these sort of things uh, more in detail later but if you remember from last time by writing like this, an asterisk, an equal sign, and a memory address. That means that whatever comes after that, so just uh, cram that in into the memory, starting at this memory address. Now, if you remember from last time, I said that we are going to store our character set at address, starting at address 3800. And a full character set, uh, character set graphics, takes up two kilobytes, and we found out that that's 800 in hexadecimal. So let's just do a repetition here. We're starting at address 3,800. That's where we're going to cram in our character set. So we know that one character set is two kilobytes, and it's 2 kilobytes, 2048, that's 800 in hexadecimal. So if I add 800 to this number, 
in hexadecimal, I end up with this number. So, working uh, if you're not used to it, working with hexadecimal numbers can be a little strange at first, because we're adding 800 to 3,800, and we end up with 4,000. So, it takes some getting used to. Anyway, we start at three, uh, address 3,800, we add our character set, and we end up at address 4,000. So, between these two addresses is where our character set is going to live. All right. <clears throat> so this is also something that we are going to look at um, in a later episode. But basically what's going on here is that I'm saying that use the character use a custom character set at memory address 3800. So use the custom character set at address 3800. All right. We don't need to get super into detail because uh, a lot of this stuff uh, is something that we'll look at in detail um, in future episodes. But anyway, hopefully you understand what's going on there. We cram in our character set. This time it's the one that I made the hard way. And I say to the Commodore 64, use the character set at that memory address. So if I try to run this now, what's going to happen? So hopefully you can see it. Uh, so the characters changed and this is the character set that I made. So this one, the one that I made here, that's the one we're seeing right here now. So. Uh, the default character set is a little more chunky. Letters are a little more fat. Okay, anyway. So hopefully you can see, um, you make the connections here, see what's going on. That we have a character set, we need to put it somewhere in memory, we need to tell the Commodore where that character set is. So use the character set that's starting at that specified memory address. Okay, so that was a little repetition, a little something new, but um, I just wanted to show you so you can start making some connections because um, we are going to do <clears throat> some of the, um, yeah, this is sort of the uh, things we are going to do later on. Um, let me just, uh, very quickly now close this one as well so just to show you um, an example here with um, multicolor so i just have one character here now i just made uh, a random character in multicolor and the thing we can notice here is that now the zeros and ones as you remember are in pairs since it's multicolor, we need to do them in pairs. So that goes for both um, sprites and, uh, of course, uh, our character set. So multicolor, two bits, and uh, high resolution, one bit for a pixel. All right, so how does this look? Well, first of all, there's a lot of code in here. Um, again screen memory we're gonna look at that um, in one of the future episodes but i'm saying use the character set at address 3800 then i actually enable uh, multicolor for the screen so uh, last time i talked about multicolor character set uh, but the uh, the thing that actually decides if we are in multicolor mode or not for the screen is uh, something called screen control 2 definitely going to come back to that but anyway I'm enabling multicolor for the screen then I'm setting up um, like we did with the sprites I'm setting up multicolor 1 what's multicolor 1 so I store white in 
this memory address, D1022. Same thing for multicolor 2, D1023. So the, the concept is pretty much the same as with multicolor sprites, only we have different memory addresses for the uh, extra colors. I'm cl uh, I'll clear the screen and um, I load the character zero, uh, which is the only character that I made in this character set. Just so I can uh, get that onto the screen. And I say load 13, the color 13, which is multicolor red. All right, this is a ton of stuff. Um, let's just see how uh, this works. So there is my uh, character uh, zero, zero. This is my character zero. And uh, I loaded a, a, a special color. We have white and purple for um, the extra colors. Anyway, these were just some examples to sort of, um, again, give you a sort of a preview of, of how this is going to work. So here I am in Charpad. So first of all, let me just uh, correct uh, a mistake I just made in the previous example. So I said uh, color code 13 was multicolor red. Uh, that's not right. Uh, color uh, 13, that's multicolor green. So color 13 is multicolor green, not multicolor red. Anyway, uh, char pad. So, like with um, sprite pad, we have several windows here. So, let's start by looking at the project window over here. Now, you're gonna recognize uh, a lot of this from sprite pad. So, for example, the color systems here, it, it's uh, pretty much uh, exactly the same like uh, sprite pad. You have the background color, foreground color, Multicolor 1 and 2. Uh, this area right here, let's just uh, forget about that right now. Uh, and uh, same with this, and let's forget this right now as well. But here at the bottom, display mode. So this is where we choose what kind of character set we want to make. Do we make, want to make a high resolution? Or a multicolor. Now there are three more options down here. We are not going to be looking at those. Um, so the uh, text extended color that's actually a third um, screen uh, mode. So in very simple terms it's almost like combining uh, multicolor and high resolution for the characters, so that you could have characters that are smooth, with tiny pixels that are smooth, and uh, also color in there, several colors. Now that's a little tricky to set up, and uh, as I said, we are not going to lo be looking at that. So we have high resolution and multicolor, sort of the two standard options. So we are only going. To, um, sorry. We're only going to look at those two. So let me just first set it to high resolution, text high resolution. Now the next one here, matrix coloring method. Right now it says per project. Now if I have it set at that option, when I change a color for a character, it's going to change it for all characters. So I don't want that. I want to be able to have a separate color for uh, each character. So I'm going to, for the matrix coloring method, I'm going to go from per, par, per project to per char. So per char, uh, translate, yes. Tile set, we're gonna come back to that one. So just like with SpritePad, uh, in SpritePad we have the sprite set 
uh, here we have the char set. So just like with uh, that, you can choose one of these squares and then we have the editor down here. So if I choose this top left one and I choose a color, let's choose uh, white for this one. Then I can, uh, can just um, start to draw something here. Now you're gonna see that things change over here as well because this was the first, uh, first character. But anyway, you get the idea. It's, it's um, let me just erase this. So it's really simple. Um, every character is eight by eight pixels. I think we, we looked at that last time. So uh, this is where you would normally have your letters and numbers, right? Your A, B, C, and so on. Um, now, uh, what I'm going to do right now is something that uh, could be a good idea to do, especially in the beginning. So instead of making your own font, let's borrow the uh, default Commodore 64 font. Because if you remember, I said it's a good idea if to have the first four rows here with the standard letters and numbers because if we need to write some text to the screen there needs to be letters and numbers at the standard positions here so let me just open uh, let me just open this so here in my charpad folder i have another folder called examples so i'm going to open examples then I'm going to open something called Fonts System RAM. So I'm going to open that folder. Then I'm going to open the one called C64 RAM uppercase. I'm going to open that one. So now we have this. So this is cool. Now we have uh, letters and numbers uh, where they need to be. So what I can do right now, I can just uh, go one, two, three, four rows down. So just below this zero. And if I hold down my shift key and click the uh, bottom right character, I select all of these and I press delete. Now with this, uh, this um, a question mark selected. I just con uh, click Control C to copy, Control V to paste. So that's gonna give me another a, a copy of that character, and I just do uh, erase that, and then I just copy this one, this blank one, and paste it a few times, like that, and I select the first and the last character in this row, copy this whole row and just paste it like that. So what am I doing right now? Well just by using the supplied example file, now I have uh, a character set here <coughs> that has uh, characters, the characters that I, I need at the specified positions. So the A, for example, needs to be right here. The A graphic needs to be here. B graphic needs to be there, and so on. So now they're at the uh, the right characters are at the correct pos the right positions. So that means that I can start making some graphics from this uh, character. Now <clears throat> I have set uh, this project uh, for high resolution. So you just uh, saw me draw something. <coughs> Oops. So I'm drawing here with uh, these small pixels. But I want to use multicolor for this. So I say go from text high resolution to multicolor. And of course the character set um, goes a little crazy up here. So why does it look like this now? Well, it's because the color 
is set to 14 for this. So color 14, that's multicolor dark blue. Uh, the, this um, character set was not made in multicolor, so that's why it looks a little strange. But if I click the top left character, hold down my shift key, and click the uh, question mark there. And then with the foreground selected, I go back down to my colors and I go to one. So the top part of the white color. Click that one and now they're back to normal. So we mentioned this briefly last time that uh, in our character set we can have both multicolor and high resolution characters. And the thing that decides uh, what mode they're in is what color you choose here. So if I go to number five and if I go from the top left part here for number five uh, in, on, my, on the white color, if I go to the top part, to the bottom part, uh, I changed it. Mm. Okay, I changed it for every character. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, it's because I have set uh, it for per project down here. So obviously this changed when I, I changed to multicolor. So let me go from per project to per char like that. So now if I go back to my five foreground color and change it to multicolor. Actually number five doesn't look too bad. But what about this S character? Yeah, whatever. Anyway, the point is that what color you choose is what's going to decide what mode they're in. So uh, now we have characters here uh, where they should be and we can start making uh, our own characters here. Now this window, the map editor, this is where we are going to draw our levels. And uh, right now there's some example text right here. So I'm going to choose this cell selector. And I'm just going to choose this one. Hold down my shift key like that. And click delete. Oh, I couldn't do that. All right. Let me just select an empty area here. Copy that and paste it over this one. Like that. So, uh, by default, this map editor is set to the uh, standard Commodore 64 uh, resolution when it comes to characters. So it's 40 characters across and it's 25 um, characters tall. So the standard for the Commodore 64 screen. This is the Commodore 64 screen in characters. We can change that here. So I, ca I could say, uh, just make my map uh, here 20 characters wide. Now, you might want to do that for whatever reason, but let's keep it at 40 for now. All right. Uh, actually, yeah, um, let's go back to this blue. Let me copy this, and paste it over like that. So you get the idea, right? You just set the uh, width and height here, and we're talking um, uh, numbers uh, in characters. 40 characters wide, 25 characters tall. Anyway, we have this uh, button here, which is our brush. So now if I choose something here, I don't have any graphics right now, but if I choose my B with my brush here, then I can just start drawing something here. Now, this is not very exciting, it's just a B, so I'm going to erase that. But um, uh, you have this one, and just like with our character editor down here, we also have a pen size or a brush size that's a little bit bigger. So if I choose my B again, 
I can draw with um, this size of my, my my brush. So I'm gonna choose blue and I'm going to erase this. Uh, then flood fill, yeah. So you just have uh, some some uh, standard options here. Uh, you also have blur on or off that can be cool sometimes because then you get some sort of CRT TV effect if you enable that. Uh, yeah, let's not worry about that for now. Yeah, you can zoom in and out here. So it's pretty standard stuff, really. Uh, let's uh, start making some graphics here. Now, uh, I have my uh, my character set set for multicolor. However, I need to make sure that um, the characters that I want to be multicolor has a multicolor selected. So if I click at any random one of these, you can see that I have for the foreground color, I can see it white, it's white, but what kind of white? Oh wait, it's high resolution white. I don't want that for my, I don't want high resolution white for my multicolor characters. So let me click this one, hold down my shift key, and I'm going to select this area. So I'm going to have the text area up here, and I'm going to leave an area that's four rows uh, at the bottom. Just going to select this one. And I'm going to make this multicolor purple, like that. Uh, so I also want to do another thing. I want to change the background color. Now the background color is a background color. There's no separate background color. So that's the same for every character. I'm going to set my background color to black, like that. Now, um, actually, when I copied the uh, characters earlier, I should have uh, done something else first. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, delete almost all of these except this one. And I'm going to uh, color it with purple. And I'm going to make sure that it's multicolor purple. So the reason I, why I want to do this is because if I copy this, paste it over a few times, copy this row, copy, um, copy this entire row and just paste it like that. Now I can choose the bottom four rows, just select those and choose cyan, multicolor cyan for that. So the reason I like to do it like this is because in this uh, purple area is where I'm going to make my background graphics. Now this top area, that's just gonna be uh, text characters. I'm gonna leave that alone, not gonna touch that. And this bottom area, four rows, I'm gonna use that for HUD graphics. Now, if you don't know what a HUD is, heads up display, that's where we place our score, and maybe if we have so a little uh, map of some kind, or, or display power-ups, or whatever. So, I'm gonna have those kinds of things down here. So, my actual background graphics it's gonna be made up of these purple tiles. So, um, another thing. Now I've set um, this thing for tile set no. I'm gonna set tile set to yes. Now, I get this question or this uh, message. Select tile size. By default, it says four by four. I'm gonna choose two by two. So two by two and OK. Translate existing data. Yes, please. And here we go. So what did I do now? Well, I said uh, I want to use tiles in my project here. So this is once again 
uh, some place where we can get a little confused. So remember, these little guys, these ones over here, or when you start making background graphics, those are characters, chars. Now, uh, let me just quickly uh, make something here. I'm going to set up my multicolor. The first one for light blue. Second one is going to be brown. So I'm just going to say that this character is going to be brown. This character is going to be black. Then I'm just going to um, change this color to multicolor red. Then I choose my background color, which is black. Now, this is interesting because since we're creating background graphics, the background color itself can also be a color. So, uh, as I said, we had uh, we have three colors when we're drawing sprites because one of those colors, one of the four colors, is a transparent color. Well, here in the background graphics, that doesn't really matter because the background uh, is also a part of this in a way. So we, we, we have four colors for our background tiles if we include the background color. So but with the background color selected, I just choose my little brush here and I'm just gonna make some simple tile graphics like we looked at last time. And I'm just gonna yeah, sure, whatever. I'm gonna do this. So, here is my little brick uh, graphic. Now, what about this tile thing? Well, a tile. I'm gonna choose the uh, char brush in my tile editor. So, my tile editor here is set up so that I can combine multiple characters to make a tile. Actually, you know what? Let's... Um... So now I just have one tile in my tile set. I'm gonna set this to 64. And I'm gonna choose the second tile here. Then I'm going to choose my little brick character graphic here. So over on my tile editor, I'm just gonna, with my char brush selected, I'm just gonna draw with that character for all four positions. So now I have a tile that's two by two characters. And this is what that tile looks like. Now, if I go over to my map editor and choose brush, now I'm going to draw with a tile instead of a character. So with my brush selected in my map editor, I can start drawing with a tile like this. And I could ma start making a level like this. Now I could make another tile that's just brown, for example. And I could do something like this. So just by doing this, um, we can start to see that uh, making uh, background graphics, drawing our levels, is uh, actually not that hard if we use Charpad. And once you get the hang of it, it's actually really fun. So um, we, ha we uh, have our characters, but once we set tile set to yes, we also have a tile set here. Now. The reason that I chose 64 tiles in my tile set is because once again I've done some math and that's how many we're going to be using in our game. And um, this also has to do with how much space um, things take up in memory. Uh, so we need to come back to all of that uh, when we're going to plan our memory usage. But anyway, uh, hopefully you, you uh, get the idea here. Now, there's one more thing. Right now, you can see that 
uh, the map editor is set to 20 by 12. Now, when we started Charpad, it said 40, 40 for width, 25 for height. So 40 characters wide, 25 characters tall. That was characters, 40 characters wide, 40 characters tall. Now, once I changed it to tile set yes down here, then this was changed from characters to tiles, which means that my setup right now is 20 tiles wide. So remember, this is a tile. So 20 tiles wide, 12 tiles tall. All right. And since my tile is two by two, it's basically half of what I had before with the width and the height. So once again, I've done some math and I know that for width, we need to use 16 instead of 20. Now, let me just uh, fix my little level here. And actually, now you can see that it's starting to look like a room. So we have our opening here, we have our floor, ceiling, walls like this. And this could be a level. Now it's really boring, of course. But you could see that this could be a start of a level. So why did I say 16 here now? Hmm. So, do you have any idea? Probably hard to guess. So the thing is that if we do the math now, we can see that um, so every character like this is eight pixels. Now, even though they're double width, these pixels, so the twice as wide as normal, they still count as a pixel in the sense of uh, the Commodore 64 screen. So um, uh, now uh, let's say uh, sprite movement. A sprite moves one pixel. It's still just going to move a small pixel, even though we have our multicolor character set, multicolor sprites. It's still going to move just a tiny little pixel. So, in that sense, these double wide pixels doesn't really, they don't matter. Hopefully that makes sense. So my point here was that the reason that I said 16 tiles wide is because if we do the math, so one character is 8 pixels wide, our tile here is 2 characters wide. So that's 8 plus 8, so that's 16. So every tile here is 16 pixels wide. All right, so let me get, get my calculator. Right, so one tile is 16 pixels wide. I said 16 tiles wide for my uh, screen, my level here. 16 of these. So that's 16 times 16 pixels. 16 tiles times 16 pixels. 16 times 16. That's 256. So what am I getting at here? Well, remember the sprite movement. We don't want to use uh, this sprite thing that allows us to go past the 255 border here. So by, by designing a level like this, um, this automatically becomes the border. So both graphically, we can see it graphically, but um, as we, we already saw, by when the sprite gets over here, he wraps around here. Now, you know that there's this function where you can extend the X position, but you also know that we're not going to be using it. So the point was that that's the reason I choose 16 here. 
because 16 tiles times 16 pixels is 256 pixels across like that. So that perfectly works out with our sprite movement and um, a level like this is going to work out just fine for us. All right, so now let's look at another another thing. So uh, maybe I should have, uh, let's do another color for this one maybe. Ooh, all right, just forget it. Hopefully you can see uh, fine. Uh, anyway, uh, what I was going to show you now is that, let's say that uh, this was a level now. Okay, cool. Now, there's another great function in Charpad. This is going to help us a lot. So, if we look at this uh, button up here, it says Flexi Grid on or off. It's off by default. But if I click Flexi Grid on now, then we get these red dotted lines like this. So, what are those? Well, think of those as um, sort of a level size separation. So, uh, let me show you what I mean. Right now, they're just placed randomly here. But if we go to our project window over here and go to this MISC tab, miscellaneous tab, we see that it's a cell width 10, cell width, a cell height 10. That's this um, flexi grid area. So, by now, it's set at 10 tiles times 10 tiles. I want the width to be the same as this, the height to be the same as this. So cell width, I'm going to set that to 16. Cell height, I'm going to set that to 12. So now it matches the size of my level. Okay, so why did I do that? Well, now let me go from uh, this is the map editor, so this is going to, to uh, make our entire map, which means several screens, several levels. So if I say instead of hundred, uh, instead of sixteen, I say one hundred and sixty. Instead of twelve, I say one hundred and twenty. So now I have space for ten by ten levels. So that's uh, 100 levels in total, of course. Which means that now I could start uh, drawing my next screen here. And just like before, I need to choose a tile and just start drawing something like that. So uh, basically, now I'm starting to uh, design my uh, screens, my, my levels. And this flexi grid is going to help me. Let me do it properly like that. So this flexi grid is going to help me separate uh, the different levels, the different screens. So that's why I set the size of the um, cell width and cell height for the flexi grid as the, the same as one full uh, level like this 16 tiles by 12 tiles so the flexi grid needs to match that and uh, just by making this number uh, higher I expanded my total map here so now I'm just not just designing one screen I'm designing all the screens in my game so, that's cool. Uh, yeah, uh, so, probably shouldn't get super into detail about everything here. But we need to look at something really important. So like with SpritePad, when I save a project here now, and by the way, if you use this example file, 
be very sure to choose file save project as not don't just click this button because then you're going to uh, save over the example file you're going to overwrite your example file so we don't want to do that remember that example file was the one we opened initially so we need to go to file save project as and let me save this uh, see if I can find my desktop there we go and I'm just gonna save my project as map I'm gonna call it map now that was my charpad project file so that's not gonna help me in my code just like with sprite pad we need to export something here so if I go to file import export once again there are several options for exporting and importing we could export everything as text we're not going to do that right now so i'm going to go to import export binary and then i'm going to say export character set so that's this one my character set up here i'm going to export that all right fine so Okay, uh, I'm just gonna call it char set, like that. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, fine. I'm gonna go to file, import, export again, binary. Then I'm going to say export character set attributes. Now what's that? First, I exported my character set. So. When we export our character set, we only export the screen codes for every one of these in here. So, uh, or, or uh, sorry, uh, we are exporting the graphics here. When we're exporting the character set, we are exporting the graphics for the, yeah. Let's just say we're exporting the graphics for the characters. So, we are not exporting the color information. For example, this, this character, it has multicolor red. Uh, and this has high resolution white. When we export the character set, we're not exporting the color information. So that's why we need to import export binary export character set attributes that's the color information so let's do that and i'm just gonna say char set attrib so uh character set attributes but don't use spaces in these words char set and just a capital a and attrib a short name like that all right so now I have exported the character set, I've exported the color information for that character set. And of course the, the attributes or the colors obviously are gonna match the character set. So if I go to file, import, export again, and binary, I also need to export my tile set. So that's this one. I'm gonna uh, export this. So the tile set is going to keep track of what my tiles look like. Now in this case, it was pretty simple. It was just this character four times, but I could have used something else like this character here and maybe this character over here. So if I wanted to make some sort of fancy tile, I could do that. So that's what the tile set is going to be. So for every tile here, there's going to be four bytes. And every one of those bytes is going to say what character is a part of this tile. So four bytes for the first tile, four bytes for the next tile, and so on. So that's my tile set. So import export binary, export tile set, this thing here. I'm just going to call it tile set. And finally, now, this is something that 
is just amazing. So after talking to um, the author of Charpad a while back, he actually added this uh, function um, when I asked him. Uh, not just because I, I was a random person asking something, but because it made sense to him. So um, I'm so glad that he, he did that. Because uh, look at what uh, what's going on now. If I go to File, Import, Export, Binary. Now there's something down here called Export Flexi Gridded Submap Submaps Consolidated. This is the one. What that means is that we can export our entire map, our entire map now, all the screens that are set up here. We are exporting them into one big file, one big file with all the screens, all the levels. But inside that big file, uh, the data will be structured so that we are going to have this first level first, first screen. That's going to come at the start of the file. Then this. Then the next one and so on. So in that large big file, we're going to have every level or every screen, whatever you want to call it. Every level is going to be stored sequentially. So that's going to be really helpful for us when designing our code. So, file, import, export, binary, and export flexi graded submaps uh, consolidated. I'm going to choose that one. Consolidated, that's because we want everything, all our rooms, all our. I'm actually going to call these things rooms instead of screens or levels. I'm just going to call it a room. So all our rooms is going to be into one huge file. Export flexibility summits consolidated. And I'm just going to call this big file rooms. Like that. So I had to do four exports here. Why did I do that? So here I am in my folder where I exported all my files. My character set, my character set attributes, so the color information, uh, my tile set, and my big rooms file. And of course, the charpad project file itself. So, why did I export these ones separately? Well, that's gonna come in really handy uh, when we start our, uh, when we come to our episode about planning memory usage, because we are going to uh, put these things at different uh, areas in the memory. So uh, why we do it that way, uh, we're going to come back to that in that episode. But hopefully you got. Um, you got something out of this. We talked about a ton of stuff here. Hopefully it made sense. Hopefully I didn't just ramble along here. But you can see that this is a fantastic tool for us uh, for making background graphics, designing levels and all that stuff. So this is going to be super, super helpful for us. And uh, in fact, if you um, bought this download it and install it on your computer i would definitely recommend start playing around with it to just get familiar with how this works because now you know about character sets and you know about this high resolution multicolor stuff you also know about tiles and tile set and this flexi grid thing to separate the levels or the rooms so I don't think we should go any more into uh, detail right now. I just encourage you to uh, start playing around with Charpad and uh, getting comfortable with how things are set up. So I think that's enough for now. So let all of this sink in and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.